Good morning, everyone. So last week, the Where is Mrs. Skur room was an upstairs cadet room. Now, what do you think? Where do you think I am this week? Can you figure it out? But don't think too hard because I need you to pay attention to the story today. So can some of you Grace kids remember the big picture question we started last March? I mentioned it last week too with a Nehemiah lesson. The question is, who is in control of everything? And the answer is, God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. Now, last week's story was about how God used Nehemiah to get Jerusalem's walls rebuilt. And Nehemiah did this by praying a lot and by organizing the people to do the job well. Nehemiah was a man of prayer. Now we're moving ahead 52 days, which is a little bit less than two months, to the day when everything was finished. The temple was done, the walls were done, everything. And now that remnant of people who returned to Judah gathered together to listen to God's word, the law. Now I'm going to read a couple paragraphs from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And the story is called, Get Ready. Have you ever been to a party that lasted a whole week? Have any of you had a birthday party that lasted a whole week? That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Lots of gifts, lots of good food. Um, how about a sermon that went on all day? Now, what if Pastor Brian or Pastor Sean preached a sermon and we had to sit there all day? What would you think about that? Well, that's what happened to God's people after they came home from being slaves. They had forgotten how God wanted them to live or who they were supposed to be. So Ezra and Nehemiah read them the rules God had given Moses. Now I'm going to read you the kid version of the Ten Commandments for this part. Number one, keep God first in your life. Number two, have no idols, worship only God. Number three, always treat God's name with respect. Number four, keep Sunday special for God. I love how that's worded. Keep Sunday special for God. Number five, obey and respect your parents. Number six, do not hurt others with words or actions. Number seven, keep your promises to others and to God. Number eight, do not steal from others. Number nine, always tell the truth. And number 10, do not be jealous or envious of others. Now let's get back to the story. Something odd happened. The more the sermon went on, the sadder the people got. Why? Was the sermon that boring? No, not really. It was strange, you see, as Ezra read the book of rules, it worked like a mirror. It showed them what they were like, and they didn't like what they saw. They saw that they had not been living the way they should. They saw they were cruel and selfish. We've blown it, they cried. Now God will punish us. They thought they knew what God was going to do, but they didn't. Of course, they might have picked up a clue from Ezra's name, which means help is here. And an even stronger one from Nehemiah's name, because his name means God wipes away our tears. And that, as you'll see, is exactly what God was getting ready to do. So I have this little activity here. I have a little demonstration. You see this black on my face? This black represents all the sin in my life. All those commandments I haven't kept, because those Ten Commandments I just read, I haven't kept them very good this past week. I know I haven't. This black represents all that sin. And God's law is like this mirror. When the exiled Jews returned to Israel and were done fixing those walls and were hearing God's law for the first time in a long time, like 70 plus years, hearing the law was like looking in a mirror. And they were shocked at how far they had gone in their disobedience. They cried because of how unclean they were. Now, when I'm reminded of God's will for my life and how I blow it regularly, it's like looking in a mirror and seeing my sin. The Israelites knew they could not fix themselves, and I know I cannot fix myself even if I try. Now watch, I'm gonna try to fix it myself. 
trying to get rid of the sin. Ugh, I'm making it worse, aren't I? Do you think I might need some help? God has given us the law to act like a mirror, to show us how messed up we really are. It's not pretty, and we can't do anything about it ourselves. That's the bad news. But, oh, the good news. Jesus came to die on our behalf so we wouldn't have to suffer the full consequences of our sin. He doesn't just forgive our sin. He wipes it away. It's paid in full. We can't do anything to help ourselves. We need Jesus to wipe all this sin out of our lives so we don't have to suffer the full consequence of our sin. He doesn't just forgive sin. He wipes it away, paid in full. We can't do a thing to help ourselves. It's all grace and over-the-top, all-sufficient grace. We don't deserve it, but it's ours if we ask. We need God's help, and he gives it each and every time. I'm going to read you a couple more paragraphs from the book. Ezra looked at God's children. Great hot tears were welling up in their eyes and streaming down their cheeks. He stopped his sermon mid-sentence and shut the book. We're having a party, he said, and that's just what they did all week long. God wants us to be happy, Ezra said. All day they listened to stories about the wonderful things God had done for his people. How he made the world, how he gave a special promise to Abraham, how he rescued them from slavery, how he spoke to Moses and showed the people how to live, how he brought them to a special land, how he rescued them no matter what, time after time, over and over again, because of his never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. That's what God did for us. Now our Christ connection reminds us that God's word is powerful. When Ezra read God's word, the people changed their ways and loved God more. The Bible says that Jesus is the word. Jesus is God who came to live with people on earth and Jesus has the power to change our hearts and wipe away our sins for good. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for giving us everything we need. Jesus, thank you for wiping away all our sins if we truly believe. And Holy Spirit, thank you for always working hard to help us live a life of love. We love you back. In your name we pray, amen. And that's your story for today. Oh, I suppose you guys maybe want to know where I am? Well, let me show you where I am. I am behind the pulpit. There's the sanctuary. There's the pulpit where the... I'm on that ramp that comes up here and goes around this corner and comes behind the pulpit. We have this ramp in case some people need to get up on the pulpit stage and they're not able to do steps, they can use this ramp. So that's where I am today. Stay tuned to find out where I'll be next week. See you later.